Good morning. Welcome to the premium and public video discussion for Friday, September 16th, 2022. I decided to come by them today mostly because of what's going on in the tropics, specifically with Tropical Storm Fiona. Um, I already am seeing quite a bit of, um, let's say, social media posts and discussions with the worst case scenarios from various models, whether it be the European, the GFS. So rather than kind of ignore it and then let hysteria and fear run run amok on social media let's address what's actually going on and why we really can't jump on any one solution just yet but also give you a better idea of what's what's realistic and and what is what has to go unfold in order for you to get a storm tracking up the coast so we start off first with absolutely beautiful weather conditions this morning we have a uh, Tracking conditions and temperatures have plummeted over the interior into the mid to upper 40s. We were in the mid to upper 40s also in the suburbs that they're starting to warm up into the lower to mid 50s. And we are in the lower to mid 60s in your urban areas with that urban heat island effect doing its job. Winds are light and variable and that is because high pressure is in complete control providing tranquil weather conditions. We do have some showers up here. Let me reset that real fast from our weather tap source and you can see the showers here rotating around this high pressure system they will remain well away from the region no real threat for our neck of the woods until we get a backdoor cold front dropping south by about monday that will produce some a few pesky showers but nothing like a washout or anything of that nature taking a look at the latest visible satellite picture it's absolutely beautiful out there but you might notice some haze here this is from a forest fire out west that has pushed into our area the smoke so you're going to see a bit of a hazy sunshine for today really on through this entire weekend with this haze hanging around the region you might also notice uh some of your allergies acting up especially if uh you have any type of tree allergy bark you know like oak stuff like that uh you might definitely notice that in the air so just Keep that in mind if you start getting headaches and whatnot. So let's go down to our tropics. This is Tropical Storm Fiona. It has winds of 50 miles per hour. It's moving to the west at 15 miles per hour. And it's expected to move through the Windward Islands. Sorry, the Leeward Islands. And then to south of Puerto Rico. And then right through the Dominican Republic. Heading towards the Bahamas. Notice it remains a tropical storm during this entire period. So why is that the case? Well, let's take a look at the latest visible and infrared satellite picture as the sun is rising. Notice all your convection, that's the thunderstorms here, are all to the east of the low level circulation. Okay, and even yesterday it was completely exposed. That's important. That's a signal of what we call vertical wind shear. Now, when we talk about wind shear, in thunderstorms around our neck of the woods, they can enhance thunderstorms, cause turning, and uh, can create tornadoes. In this case, you have large scale shear. Okay, it's not mesoscale, it's synoptic, large scale. And what that does is that it forces all your thunderstorms to blow off to the east. It, it's the, the thunderstorms aren't able to form over the center of circulation. And a warm car low. It becomes strongest when everything is vertically stacked, like a chimney, because it takes the moisture from the ocean and transports it up into the atmosphere, and it causes what we call latent heat release, and that release has to be expelled out. So it's like a it's like an exhaust engine. Okay, when you have this wind shear, it knocks that engine off its uh, axis, and it doesn't allow it to intensify or to strengthen. So right now we have this vertical wind shear in place and so as it's marching through the caribbean sea northern caribbean sea it's not going to be moving into a very favorable environment you've got dry air you got vertical wind shear not until it gets to about the bahamas which we see about here will it move into a little bit more of a favorable environment where it could potentially intensify and also there is a ton of very warm water here with uh, we could see right here Take a look at this that is plenty of warm water so well above normal waters just uh, ready to uh, be used for a tropical system and so you have plenty of potential energy involved with this storm the question is when does the shear starts to subside 
So let me pull up the water vapor satellite picture. And again, here's our storm. Here's a bit of our dry air that we're talking about and the shear. Now the key to this forecast with Fiona, once it gets to the care, once it gets to uh, the Bahamas, is how does it interact with all these troughs that are marching through in the polar jet stream? So right now we have what we call substance sinking air. It's going to set up a beautiful weekend for us. Okay, it's going to be absolutely beautiful. That's why when we take a look at the infrared. Not much going on, right? It's absolutely wonderful out there. But as we move on through the next seven to ten days, each one of these troughs are going to have a chance to dig a little bit deeper. They're driven, ironically, by the activity that's going on in the Western Pacific because we're having typhoons lift up to the east or along Japan and heading towards the Aleutian Islands, which are way up here. And that enhances our weather pattern. It amplifies it. Okay, It's like a guy taking a rope and starting to throw, lift it up faster and heavier. So it creates more wavelengths. It creates deeper troughs and ridges. And so as a result that starts to march its way through North America and towards our neck of the woods. And the question is, which trough and when does it pick does it does it pick up this tropical storm, which could be a hurricane by the time it's sitting around here because of very warm waters and favorable conditions. So that is what you're seeing in all the various model guides. This is the European guidance there is our tropical storm fiona and you can see the troughs marching our way through there's our deep trough in the Aleutians. one trough after the other is marching through the united states and you can see in this case one misses the other one approaches will that catch it on the gfs it's produced all sorts of solutions we have moved away from the idea of a ridge sitting to the north of this storm driving into the coast that an earlier gfs model guidance was showing that didn't make much sense because of the overall pattern we have in place. And so I threw that out on Wednesday night. We talked about that in the live chat. That is gone. But now what we have here is one trough after another. And this time the GFS has a trough strong enough to pick up Fiona and send it out. Whereas the European does not. And the factors here involved include strengthening of the uh, tropical storm and the potential for its making an environment around it and also how deep this trough is that's approaching and then even if that misses well you got another trough and another trough so you get the idea here that these troughs are going to be marching their way through and what's key to this forecast is that these troughs are in a neutral to positive tilt okay either neutral or positive Kind of like a little bit like this. And that typically what happens is that that doesn't pull a storm towards the coast. It typically pulls it away. It sends it out. Kind of like a goalie kicking out a, a ball from the net. And we're seeing that here on the GFS ensembles. And also the European ensembles is a little bit closer to what we saw with the GFS. So the key here is the intensity of the trough and the position of Fiona. Until we know that, basically until it gets to north of uh, of Hispaniola by, by uh, later this weekend and early next week, all options are on the table, but understand with all these options is a tremendous amount of error. So if you see model guidance floating around this weekend on the internet of a hurricane landing right into New Jersey or New York City, step back. Understand that that forecast could change literally the next run, and there's a lot of volatility involved. Okay, and more than likely, most guidance right now is sending this storm back out into the Atlantic. So, my advice for you, since so it's going to be a beautiful weekend, is hey, check your supplies like you should be. We're heading into nor'easter season after all. Check your supplies, make sure you have plenty of bottled water as always, and uh, make sure your batteries are in good shape, and of course. Uh, food and, and whatnot just like you should any season honestly so when we take a look at the latest model guidance here from the uh, european guidance and how this plays out for today on through this weekend pretty tranquil we have a series of short waves passing toward north that's going to send a backdoor cold front to kind of 
linger around our region, producing scattered showers. Not a washout, though, for next weekend, uh, next week in any way, shape, or form. And then there is Fiona and the questions involved with that storm. And in the meantime, the 850 millibar temperatures, that uh, regulates our surface temperatures here. Well, it's going to be pretty nice for the most part. We're going to have one surge of heat coming up on Friday ahead of that, sorry, Thursday, coming up ahead of that cold front. Might actually hit 90 degrees in a few locations. But look at what follows with that strong cold front. Very nice weather conditions. Very cool, dare I say, fall-like, much like this morning. So let's march through this forecast for today. Tranquil conditions are expected. Look for high temperatures to range from the mid to upper 70s throughout the region with low humidity. For tonight into tomorrow morning, clear skies. Look for temperatures to fall off into the upper 50s to lower 60s. For tomorrow afternoon, look for scattered cloud cover with temperatures ranging from the upper 70s to lower 80s. For Sunday, look for high pressure to push off the coast with a little bit more of a southwesterly wind. Look for Low temperatures in the lower to mid 60s over the interior, mid to upper 60s along the coast. High temperatures will range from the lower to mid 80s over the interior and along the immediate coast, mid 80s in the Delaware River Valley. On Monday, a backdoor cold front will basically stall just to the north of us and we'll have increasing cloud cover with variable Cloud cover and showers, scattered showers. Not a washout in any way, shape, or form, but some of these showers will be capable of a brief heavy downpour or two. Look for low temperatures to range from the lower to mid 60s. High temperatures will range from the lower to mid 70s around Connecticut and Long Island, mid to upper 70s over the interior, and then lower to mid 80s around central New Jersey. And then as you head towards the Delaware River Valley, well, that's when you start pushing into the mid to upper 80s. So you can see that warm air, that warm, hot air trying to push northward. On Tuesday, the stationary front hangs around the region with sky cloud cover and a few widely scattered showers. Look for low temperatures in the lower to mid 60s over the interior, upper 60s to lower 70s along the coast. High temperatures will range from the upper 70s to lower 80s over the interior, lower to mid 80s along the coast and in the Delaware River Valley. On Wednesday, a trough hangs around the region with some sky cloud cover and possibly an isolated shower. Look for low temperatures in the upper 50s to lower 60s over the interior and mid to upper 60s along the coast. High temperatures will range from the lower to mid 80s over the interior, lower to mid 80s along the coast, and mid to upper 80s in the Delaware River Valley. On Thursday, a powerful cold front will move through. Now, ahead of this cold front, temperatures will surge. Look for low temperatures in the upper 60s to lower 70s. High temperatures will range from the lower to mid 80s over the interior, mid 80s along the coast, and upper 80s to lower 90s in the Delaware River Valley. If we get enough sunshine, someone could break 93, 94 degrees. But after that, the cold front will move through in the evening with showers and thunderstorms. Could be a few severe thunderstorms. Look for the cold front to clear out of the region by early Friday morning with high pressure in complete control on Friday with crisp, cool conditions. Lows in the lower to mid 50s over the interior, upper 50s to lower 60s along the coast, and high temperatures in the mid to upper 60s over the interior, upper 60s to lower 70s along the coast. And there is Fiona that we're going to be keeping an eye on. You can see the cold front influence here. If this cold front doesn't get it, this one will. So we're going to watch to see how all this evolves. That is your premium video forecast discussion for today and public video as well. Have a wonderful weekend and as always, stay safe out there.